You tell her I and, and, and I did it. I, 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 she might cry. So, well, I'm curious. You know, I know you're a huge classic film fan. We follow each other on Facebook, so I hear all your thoughts. Can you talk a little bit about the feelings of being back on this red carpet, celebrating these movies after two years? Well, it, first of all, it's great to be outdoors. And, uh, nice. and, and to be anywhere, to be, and to be somewhere with this many people who love the same stuff I love is great. Um, we spend a lot of time watching classic movies at home, but there's nothing like seeing it with an audience that appreciates it. And, uh, you know, it's just, I love the fact that they do this every year because, sure, you can sit there and watch TCM around yeah. the clock, which, yeah. which some I people do. I know do. I, yeah, and, uh, yeah, we're in the night. But, <laughs> but there's something wonderful the about it now being together with a sense of nostalgia. Whole that was, that that was, like they see the, the rise and, and, and you can really feel um, a and, community. Uh, I was certainly a part yeah. of that. Well, you're introducing Cry to the Marines, which I'm a, a John Garfield, I think the word obsessive is, is the word I would utilize. Uh, I can tell why I love this movie, but I'm curious what, what it is about this movie and that performance that resonates. Well, uh, the, you know, I wrote a book on John Garfield. And the fact that I did not know that until that this second makes me a horrible John Garfield fan. Yeah, it's very obscure. It's hard to find. I'm going to track it down. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, so I'm, I'm a fan there. Uh, I was in the same Marine Regiment as the character at the center of Pride of the Marine. Um, different times. Uh, and, and it's Garfield. And I can watch Garfield do anything. Anything. I have a record album of all of story of John Garfield telling the story of Herman the Omen in Rabbit Town. <laughs> Yeah. I need, to, I need to hear this now. I'm very Not really necessarily. <laughs> I know Stephen a little bit. But, well, I, you I, know, I, know uh, I, I knew him personally. I, I came to, I came to know him when I was writing the book. Like I said, 45 years ago. That. Uh, but, uh, and I, I, I had to watch all of his films. And I watched him. Uh, he's, he's the pre-Brando Brando. He's the pre-Montgomery Cliff Cliff. It's, it's, um, uh, everybody since then, De Niro and Pacino, they all owe something to the style of acting that he, he really created in the movie, and uh, it had been there in, in the theater, but Garfield was the first one in the movies yeah. uh, to, to approach this, that kind of personal, in-the-moment style. It wasn't so theatrical presentation. Well, exactly. I, I love his work. We got, we got to sit down and talk some more. Uh, well, I, TCF got me through the pandemic. I'm curious, is there a classic film that got you through the pandemic? We watched a lot of films, but let me think. I'm trying to think of one single one. I'll take a I'll take a cover or a genre. You know, it's interesting. Yeah, like, um, you're like uh, Kurosawa. Oh, like you introduced me. Uh, I introduced to, yeah. her to Kurosawa. Oh, okay. I mean, I knew of them, but yeah, I was yeah. like, okay. We watched a bunch of those. And I I also because of the book I'm currently working on, I went back and looked at Gone with the Wind, which I'd seen many times, but I had just read the book and I went back and saw the movie again and I saw all kinds of colors and nuances that but the we're fact in the we book and I hadn't realized we're in the mind. And so and uh, and I spent a lot of time thinking about that movie in the last year or so. And that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, Kim, it is so great to get to talk to, to you. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen you. Yeah. 